welcome to Orient Today. I'm Joe Johnson, and once again, I am joined by... Tracy Woodrum. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having me back. Summer is sadly winding down. I'm trying to hold on to it. I'm trying to hold on. <laughs> yeah. like very summery, yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm, uh, I'm ready for fall. I look forward to fall. Yeah. I look forward to Halloween. I like seeing the uh, decorations in stores and... Uh, yeah, it's my favorite time of the year. Yeah. You know, fall is actually one of my favorite, ho or not holidays, seasons. Um, but I just, you know, like I was saying earlier, it's I love being able to just run out the door. You know, you don't need all the coats and, oh, do I have the right shoes? Because it might be cold or rainy. And so summer's just easy. <laughs> I like easy. <laughs> That's <so>. true. <laughs> Especially like on the weekend, just throw on shorts and a T-shirt and go. But, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Um, it was a busy weekend this past weekend. Did you do anything exciting? exciting this past week I did I actually I got to see family that was in town from Florida so mm. that was that was fun and of course I watched some football oh so. yeah week <laughs> one took yes. place in the NFL yeah how about you uh, like I said it was it was a busy weekend uh, the Dragons football team they kicked off or I don't want to say they kicked off their season but their home opener was on mm -hmm. Friday so we were there uh, shooting highlights of that we'll have that coming up in a little bit uh, and then it was busy Saturday. There were lots of events all happening right on top of each other on Saturday. Uh, one of them is, uh, oh, let's start off with Oktoberfest. Yes, so yes. DDA, uh, the Lake Orion DDA brought back their Oktoberfest, but it was a little different this year. The past two years, they held it in the parking lot over by Children's Park and right. people can come and get food and there was music. Yep. It's a little different this year. Um, they did a, a pub crawl. Yes. So yes. people would check in at the DDA office on Broadway there and then they basically had a map and would uh, walk through downtown Lake Orion to the various eateries that were taking part. Uh, Fork and Pint and Anita's Kitchen and 313 Pizza Bar, Bitter Tom's, Oat Soda, Wine Social, Johnny Black. Uh, they all took part in the pub crawl. Um, and as the DDA has been doing lately, they partnered up with Oxford. Mm -hmm. So that uh, beautiful trolley was taking people back and forth yes. between Lake Orion and Oxford. Yep. So, um, so, you know, I, being here as long as I have in this community, it's always exciting to see downtown bustling and, and people walking up and down the streets and uh, filling the the restaurants and the stores in downtown Lake Orion. So. It, it is and living so close by I sometimes even if I don't attend the actual event I'll just walk down just to like feel the energy and be amongst the hustle and bustle and yeah. I just I really enjoy it although I did walk down earlier before the pub crawl started and uh, I did get a an, Oh, a fantastic bratwurst oh, nice. from Oat Soda because they had their, <laughs> their features. Yeah, they had different for, specials, oh, menu items, yeah. It was delicious. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, <laughs> this is kind of exciting. I asked uh, someone from the DDA, why did you change it up this year? Yeah. And they said, oh, because we got something big planned for next year. So oh, okay. as you may or may not know, the DDA has purchased the Lumberyard property yes. on uh, M24. And they plan on holding next year's Oktoberfest on their newly landscaped oh, property at the Lumberyard. That's so, exciting. So yeah, so I'll they i have to mark that in my calendar then exactly. for next year. I'm yeah, really that's going to be an event. It. I've seen plans yeah. of what they have proposed for that property and it looks yeah. spectacular. It's going to be a gathering place in Lake Orion. So, yes. uh, so look forward to that next year. Another fun thing that happened over the weekend, uh, the, again, it was on Saturday, is uh, there's a relatively new place right on the border of Orion and Oxford near Drainer there, uh, Detroit Wing Company. Oh, yes. And uh, they reached out to us and said that they were hosting a wing eating contest. Oh. And their plan was to have it uh, take place between uh, Oxford Police and Fire and Lake Orion Police and Fire. Uh, well, unfortunately, the Orient team couldn't get enough uh, brave souls to uh, eat that many wings. So they had members of the Dragons football team sit in, uh, joining Anthony from the uh, fire department. Uh, each contestant had 25 buffalo wings uh, placed in front of them. And whoever was the first team to down every single wing uh, would win uh, a donation to their charity of choice. And uh, when they brought the wings out, I kind of coughed because that aroma hit me. They were so <laughs> spicy. I oh. had to back up a little bit. 
Uh, different people right. had different methods. Some of them would pull the meat off with their fingers and eat the meat using their fingers, and other people just ate it right off the bone. Oh um, but it, it came right down to the wire where everyone was done except for one guy on either team, and they both had meat in their mouth, and they're trying to swallow it, <laughs> and they looked a little green as they were doing oh, it. No. And the Oxford team stood up just like literally seconds before the Orient team stood up. So Oxford claimed victory this year. And, <laughs> and the thing that made me laugh at the end, they also did a raffle for, uh, for wings for a year, free wings for a year. Oh, wow. And one of the Oxford uh, team members uh, won the wings for a year. And they're like, I don't know when I'm going to eat wings again. <laughs> uh, so that was pretty funny. Hopefully and, the uh, year starts whenever they <laughs> first go, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh. So that was pretty interesting to uh, to see the wing contest. Yes, I noticed all the bottles of water, but aren't you supposed to have milk? <laughs> That's what they say. If, if your like mouth is burning, they say water does nothing to help it. I so. heard it actually can intensify. Exactly. The heat, so. so yeah, I I felt bad for those guys, but they knew what they were getting into. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So that was fun. And then another major event that was happening in Orient Township this past weekend was uh, we have this beautiful facility, Palazzo del Bacci, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, on Lapeer Road in Orient Township, and they hosted another major tournament uh, this past weekend. It ran, kicked off Thursday. They had a little opening ceremony and started competition on Thursday. Uh, it went into Friday and Saturday. Uh, the finals took place on Saturday. They had different divisions. Uh, silver division was more for amateurs. The gold division was more for people who travel the country uh, competing professionally. Wow. Uh, all the players represented uh, U.S. and Canada. And I was told that there were uh, 60 teams, uh, 250 uh, individuals that competed over the weekend. Wow. And, you know, as you remember, we, we had our ONTV banquet at Palacio de Bacci, and it was an absolute blast. I had a lot of fun there. So much um, fun. But this and, is a whole nother level, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was really nice hearing these people say great things about the facility. They, they're saying that this facility in Orient Township isn't just one of the best in the country, it's one of the best in the world. Wow. And people uh, have come here from all over the world and they're blown away by the facility we have in Orient Township. Wow. So two teams made the, uh, the finals. They were both from Chicago. Uh, the Glutes, who you see right there, they took the whole thing. Uh, they won $5,000. That was the top prize for the Ooh. Gold Division. So it is worth the trip. Yeah. Uh, the runners-up were Highwood Bocce, like I said, both out of Chicago. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was wild to see the competition. They really, really get into it. And it's a lot of fun. So It looked like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you haven't been to Palazzo de Bocce, get out there. It's, it's one, we're so lucky to have a facility like that pretty much right in our own backyard. Yes, so, yes. Yeah, it yeah, is a lot of fun. Beautiful. Bring the family. And then the other thing I mentioned earlier and I'm still recovering from is uh, football on Friday. Uh, I'm usually the one running up and down the <laughs> sidelines at Dragon Stadium trying to keep up with these young kids. Uh, and it, it uh, takes a lot out of me. I love it. Yeah. I have a lot of fun. I almost got hit twice. You'll see uh, footage of me where the player almost brushes me as he oh, comes. No off the uh, field. So uh, the Dragons, it was their home opener. They hosted Oxford, which is a big rival, as you mm -hmm. can imagine. Yep. Uh, they play for a trophy called the Double O Trophy, and that's always a big thing. Uh, whoever wins gets to hang on to the trophy in, uh, for a year. Nice. Uh, Orion won it last year, so they were trying to keep it this year. Oxford came to Lake Orion, and uh, here are the highlights from the game on Friday. On the evening of Friday, September 8th, the Lake Orion Dragons hosted the Oxford Wildcats for the home opener at Dragon Stadium. Prior to the start of the game, the Lake Orion and Oxford cross-country teams joined forces to deliver the game ball. 
The women's team started at Oxford High School and ran along M24 to St. Joseph Catholic Church, where they handed the ball off to the men's team, who took it the rest of the way to Lake Orion High School. Following the national anthem, the ball was handed to the referees in time for kickoff. The relay raised $3,000 for the Tate Mir Foundation, 42 strong, whose mission is to create a better future by helping students develop a greater sense of purpose, community, and resilience. Lake Orion started off the 2023 season with a 54-33 win over Livonia Stevenson at the Battle of the Big House on August 24th. They improved to 2-0 with a convincing win at Harper Woods, 28-6, the following week. They return home to face Oxford in the battle for the double O trophy. With under five minutes to go in the first quarter, Oxford has the ball on their own 44-yard line. Quarterback Jack Hendricks pitches the ball to junior Luke Johnson, who finds a hole and outruns defenders on his way to the end zone. The 56-yard run puts the Wildcats on the scoreboard first, the JKD PAT is good, and Oxford leads 7 0. During the following possession, the Dragons are on their own 25 with quarterback T.R. Hill in shotgun. He takes the snap and hands off to Bill Roberson, who goes outside, skirts the sideline, makes a cut, and goes the distance. 75 yards into the end zone. The Hoffman PAT is good, and the Dragons even things up 7 7. With 3.19 still left in the first, the Wildcats are at their own 46 for Hendricks under center. He hands off to Luke Johnson, who once again finds a hole and almost reaches the end zone, but he's run down by Andrew Parker and taken out of bounds at the one. But on second and two, Johnson runs left and completes the drive with a touchdown. The KDPAT was good, and the Wildcats go back on top, 14-7. Let's go to the second. Following an Oxford penalty, the Dragons begin a drive at the Wildcats' 40-yard line. On first and 10, Roberson takes the handoff and tears off a nice game, reaching the 17-yard line. A few plays later, on first and goal, Hill fakes the handoff, keeps it, and goes in for the score. The PAT was good, and things are even again 14-14. Following an Oxford punt, Lake Orion begins a drive at their own 25 with 7.19 left in the second. Facing a fourth and two on Oxford's 42, T.R. Hill hits Dominic Novak at the 20 and he does the rest, evading tacklers on his way to the end zone. The extra point was good and the Dragons take the lead for the first time in the game, 21-14. With 9.23 left in the third, Hill is in shotgun on first and 10 at the 35. He hands off to Roberson, who makes some nifty moves and is forced out of bounds at the 21. On first and goal from the 10, Hill is in shotgun. He takes the snap, fakes the handoff, and goes in for his second rushing TD of the game. The PAT was good. Lake Orion 28, Oxford 14. A Hoffman field goal in the third quarter extended the lead to 17 points. Then with three and a half left in the game, senior Raymond Payne got in on the fly with a six yard TD run of his own. With Hoffman adding yet another extra point, the final score, Lake Orion 38, Oxford 14. With the win, the coveted double O trophy stays at Lake Orion High School for another year. We caught up with head coach Chris Bell after the game who praised his impressive quarterback. He's playing great football. He makes good decisions. He's one of our biggest weapons. Um, he can run it, he can throw it. He's smart, he's calling, he's calling some plays out there that he sees. Um, he just, I, he is, he's worked very, very hard in the off season. He's worked very hard all summer with Coach Fisher. And uh, I can't say enough good things about him. He's accurate, he's tough. You know, our, just, our concern, we just have to keep him healthy. But yeah. he's, he's playing lights out. Yeah. Talk about the defense because you were down 14-7 and Luke Johnson was seemingly going off for, for Oxford there. And at some point, something happened there in that second quarter. You guys end up scoring 31 straight thereafter. What, what, was something done defensively that allowed you to make adjustments to, to part, hold him under? Part of it's just settling down sure. in tackling. We missed a lot of tackles early on. The other thing is when they run their zone scheme, you know, if you're not, if you're not staying in your gap, 
you're allowing for open holes and cutbacks. That's the thing. Sometimes we would play too fast. We would overrun plays. You throw in a missed tackle, and it was big plays. So and they're very good. They're one of the best zone teams around, and they got the backer runs hard. And, yeah, early on, they, and they, they were coming off the ball. Mm -hmm. So not only did we have to do a good job against the zone, we had to hold our ground as they were coming off the ball. So it was a good test for us. Your front four played really well tonight. Yeah, they do. You know what? They play hard, and they and we're rotating those guys. And our outside backers, our two bookends, and in, in Katie and and uh, Joey, secondary's been playing well. I love our defense. It's just it's it's a new scheme. We've gone from the four two five to more the hybrid three four. Um, so I just we gotta keep getting better every single week. The Dragons improved to three and zero on the season, and will host the three and zero West Bloomfield Lakers on Friday, September fifteenth. From Dragon Stadium, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV Sports. So that's exciting. The yeah. Dragons are three and zero to start the season, and they're heading to West or West Bloomfield's coming to Lake Orion this Friday, and uh, right. they are three and zero as well. So that should mm. be a great game. It'll be a great matchup. So, yes. Yeah, exciting. All right, joining us now is Maureen Kiek from Ello Palooza, <laughs> which is taking place this Saturday, yes. all day Saturday, over at the Wildwood uh, Pavilion at Orion uh, Township Civic Center Park. Uh, Maureen, welcome. Thank you. And uh, you, you, you ready? You gotta ready. be ready. We're <laughs> yes. just a few days away. Yes, yes, we, we are always ready. We, uh, it's, it's our biggest fundraiser and uh, it's so fun and we are just dedicated and we have so much support from um, vendors and sponsors and volunteers and yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to it. And so far the weather looks like it's gonna be holding out, so. So we All have right. a Good. lineup of bands throughout the day. Who, who do we have? Uh, we have uh, the, the D-Man um, music group, and um, we have Sadie Bass and Ava Swiss. Um, oh. One Ton Trial, there, there's so many of them. Um, Sunset Boulevard is a um, 80s cover band, so that's gonna be really Ooh, fun. that'll be fun. Um, yeah. yeah, and if you check out the website, ellapalooza.org, um, in a few days we'll have the lineup okay. when everyone's playing. Um, it's just an all-day festival. Doors open at 1.30, music starts at 2. We have food trucks, vendors, um, music, uh, all kinds of different genres. Mm -hmm. um, we have face painters, stuff for the kids to do, face painters and caricature artists and all that fun stuff. So it's a great That's day, awesome. to, a it, great way to spend a day. It outside. is a fun event. I've been, I, have you been to? Oh, I've I mean, other than to cover, yeah. yeah, but. I'm at every I've been He's to just enjoy, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's a great event. And if, especially if you love music, you just want to be, you know, around and. Uh, it's it's a great way to spend a, a Saturday fall afternoon. So. Now, wasn't Ava Swift, Swiss, wasn't she on one of those shows, uh, like, America's yep. Got Talent yep. or something yep. like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so much local our talent. Our very own from Oxford, right up, right yeah. up the street yeah. in Oxford. Yeah, that's pretty yes. exciting. Yeah. yeah, so much local talent. Yes. yes. Now, yeah. talk about why you do Elo Palooza. What are the origins? How did it come about? So, the, the Daisy Project Michigan was formed um, by uh, three moms and, and some family members because there was nowhere for our kids that had cerebral palsy to play. There, was, there were no really accessible parks. Mm -hmm. um, you don't know what you don't know. So there, there were parks people had tried, but unless until you live it, um, you know, you don't really realize that it's, it's a little bit lacking. So we organized the first one um, in order to raise money uh, for Friendship Park to uh, yeah. let them play and um, for wheelchair swings that you can actually put the wheelchair on. And then that way Xander could play with his brother and you know, Kylie could play with her sister and, and my son could play with his friends. Yeah. So yeah, oh yeah, yep, that's my son. <laughs> Um, and then that grew to, um, our mission grew to just making all recreational places accessible um, for people with disabilities or really anybody. So we have gone and we've um, raised money for, through Ella Palooza. We raised money continuously for parks. We're now branching into Macomb County. Um, there's two parks, the Clinton Township okay. Park that's gonna be opening as well as River Bends in, in Shelby Township. Um, we've donated some equipment and the plan is to donate more equipment to make it fully accessible. Um, not just parks though, beaches. Everybody likes to, to swim and, and to hang out with their friends. So yeah. we have um, raised money through Ellapalooza to donate beach mats to local um, local parks and, and uh, Sleeping Bear uh, Park and okay. the MDA camp um, oh, over in Lexington. Nice. Uh, we've done other things like we've had individuals or schools that contact us and say, hey, there's no money in the budget, but so-and-so needs you know something that's not covered by insurance. Um, one of the schools needed like a swing, like a sensory swing for someone, uh, one of their 
students with autism. Mm -hmm. So we've done some fundraising and we just, you know, we, we, we raise money and we give it away to make life accessible for everybody. That's great. So. Did, did Daisy Project have a role in the uh, Miracle League uh, yes, field? Talk yes, about yes, that. yes, baseball too. And the Daisy Project believes that fun is universal, inclusion is expected, and to just be kind and rock on. So oh. not just, you know, parks and, and baseball sports, we just want everybody to, to be able to do anything they want in their local communities with people they love. Yeah, so we, we helped to raise money for, um, and for the Miracle League uh, North Oakland and uh, the concession stand, all that fun stuff. So yeah, it's really, really, it's such a great program and I love going out there and seeing the kids. Um, everyone can play together, you know, and, and that's really, that's the point. So. Yeah, we were out there for opening day when they opened to the public and mm -hmm. uh, it's hard not to get emotional when you see everyone out there laughing and having mm -hmm. fun and and uh, everyone's on uh, equal footing. Everyone's yes. able mm -hmm. to, to play without any barriers. It's really amazing. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's our goal. Yeah, that's terrific. And our passion. So yeah, so Wildwood uh, Amphitheater, another amazing gem here in the community. And uh, talk about that having access to that facility that allows you to do what you do. Yes, yeah, it's a partnership with um, with Orient Township, um, and and they they have beautified it. They they've given it to us. They uh, have allowed us to um, really start pretty much bare bones um, <laughs> all those years ago. Um, and they've actually made it accessible. I remember the first few years, you know, there was a, you know, the big hill there, right. and it was a grass hill, and which was great, but you know, those of us, our friends that are in chairs, can't really roll down or up the thing. So they had paved it. Mm -hmm. Now they have, um, you know, bathrooms too that are accessible. Yeah. Um, and they've just done. They have like, you know, the cement pads that people mm -hmm. can pull up their wheelchairs, or they can, if they want to go down to the bottom of the hill, because we have the vendors kind of on the hill as well as merch tents are down sometimes by, right. you know, the lower levels. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean parking, ample parking, everything's close, everything is just, it's, it's amazing. It's very, very Yeah. Good. Talk about the vendors, what kind of things are, gonna, are the vendors going to be offering? Oh, we're going to have um, all kinds of vendors. Uh, we're going to have um, like people with jewelry and um, I can't even remember. So how <laughs> does that work? There'll be they... a list on the website. Yes, oh yes, yes. <laughs> check out ellapalooza.org. I'm so sorry, I'm so nervous today. Um, <laughs> ellapalooza.org will give you all the information that you need, um, including like I said, the lineup and tickets. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, uh, do so because right. they, they go up a little bit at the door right now they're 25 bucks okay all of the proceeds for everything anything sold merchandise um, uh, you know we have the food the food trucks we have a beer tent you know the live music all day um, all that stuff 100% of the proceeds um, goes directly back into the community so that's great yeah so if someone buys a ticket can they come and go as needed or? absolutely okay yes yeah everyone will have a wristband um, and yep, you can come and go because it is fun and, and you know, you can check the lineup. Maybe you have some errands to run. Don't not come just because you can't come for the whole thing. Right. You're, you are right. free to come and go. And um, also, I will say bring a sweater because you know, Michigan weather, it's gonna be nice, <laughs> but I think that we're also so happy that it's so nice and warm and sunny during the day. And then some people tend to leave because, oh, I forgot my sweatshirt or you know, no blanket. So yeah, bring a yeah. chair, bring a blanket. Um, we'll have food and drink and everything else you need. And so. it runs till 11 o'clock, so yeah, it yeah, should be a little PM. cooler. So yeah. yeah, be prepared for that. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, and yes. Even if you have little ones, right? You can yes. come, go home for nap time, and come <laughs> back again. Come back, so. bring more friends. Yes. And, <laughs> yeah, our goal, we just want to fill the hill. We want to fill the hill. We yeah. want to see more and more yeah. people every year, um, which is happening. Um, again, you know, the, the, the local talent is amazing. The music, the, it's yeah. just a fun day, and it's for a great cause. Yeah, yeah, talk about the atmosphere from past events. What do you witness? What do you experience uh, throughout the day? I just love seeing just the com camaraderie, mm -hmm. um, you know, people just connecting and talking that maybe wouldn't otherwise connect and talk. Um, I love seeing all the kids just kind of find each other and, you know, throw a football around or a soccer ball or, you know, beach ball, stuff like that. So, yeah, it's just really fun and people just find things to do and it's just nice to just be around people and to be around friends. Yes. So. It's like having Absolutely. our own little mini pine knot, yes. isn't it? It, yes. is. it is. It is. It's a yes. wonderful facility. And yeah, if you've ever been to, because it's kind of tailored after La La Palooza, right? Mm -hmm. Where you go all yeah. day or some of the other wild horses, some of the big festivals, yes. right? Where you go and, you know, hang out and listen to music all day. And that's what it's like. But it's local. It's mm -hmm. nice and close. And and all the proceeds are going to a great cause. Yeah. So. Now, you mentioned okay. some of the projects that uh, Daisy uh, Project has worked on. Is there anything that needs yet to be done in the community? Are there any future projects you're looking at? Yes, <laughs> we, we, have, we have big dreams. Um, one of our, one cause that's very dear to our hearts is um, adult size changing tables and accessibility in public places. Um, for example, you know, I always tell this story that, you know, we might live 35 minutes away or, or an hour away from an accessible park, 
Um, you want to stay, you want to have fun with your family. If you need to be, if you are an individual that needs to be changed, you need to time all that out, mm -hmm. which makes right. us leave earlier than we want to leave. Then we can't, you know, hang out in your communities and, and eat ice cream and do all those fun things. So, but if we had a place, um, an accessible place to change our folks, then, it, then everybody could could stay longer. And it would just, it's just, it just makes sense. It's just, it's it's fair. I mean, we are all allowed to use our restroom facilities whenever we want. So. Yes, I know. I time um, all of my trips based <laughs> on where the restrooms are. So exactly. I'm going to be drinking any fluids. So. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that that's um that's another initiative that that we're going to be working on very shortly. Here is just making um making local parks and other rest areas and just all kinds of things. Any, any, anywhere where there's a restroom that's not accessible, we want to make it accessible. That's great. So, yeah. That's wonderful. I love how you've started with, you know, you started with one goal and mm -hmm. how it just continues to grow each year. Mm -hmm. And yeah. There are always going to be needs, right? I mean, there's yes. always, yes. I mean, it's, it's shocking to me when you go to a place today and it, and it's not accessible. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it, mm -hmm. I've become so aware of it that when you do experience it, you're like, how is this still mm -hmm. happening? Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. So that's and that, goal. Yeah, that's our job is, you know, part of what we do too is we advocate, um, you know, for inclusion, for, for accessibility, for everything, and just for community. And just like, like I said, be kind to people in general. Um, yeah. So yeah, it is very important. And, and like I said earlier, I say this a lot, you don't know what you don't know. You know, people, right. unless you live it, unless you see it, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, uh, something just came up recently about paper straws or straws because you know so so many places don't have straws anymore because of the plastic and this well there's so many of our people that can't drink out of cups mm -hmm. or bottles so they have to drink out of straws yeah, yeah yeah so you know that that's just something else that you know that that we try to just spread the word about and just kind of awareness so yeah yeah, yeah. so even though this is your largest fundraiser of the year it's not just your only opportunity to contribute to the cause talk about how people can help out year round yep yeah yeah you can donate um, on our website and again no one no matter what the donation is it, it's going to some which one of our ever one of our projects um, we're working on and like I said currently it's the, the two playgrounds in Macomb County okay. um, mm -hmm. and then next will probably be the the changing stations so okay. yeah that's yeah. great. Yeah. All right. Give out that information one last time. So it's lopalooza.org if you need tickets or any more information about the event. And the Daisy Project Michigan.com is our website for um, for the Daisy Project for the, the parent company, main company. Or nonprofit, not company, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, doors open at 1.30. Things get underway at 2 p.m. Run to 11 p.m. Children 12 and under are free. Yes. That's awesome. Yep. All right. I'll be there this Saturday. Yay. So, yes. Yeah. We'll yes. see you there. Yes, and a shout out to all the volunteers and everybody who's working on it and all of our attendees. We couldn't do it without you. Oh, yeah, a small army of people helping yes, out there. Yeah, 100%. That's great. Yeah. All right, Maureen, thanks for coming out. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you. That, <laughs> our pleasure, and I'll see you on Saturday. See you guys on Saturday. And we're going to take you over to one of the last uh, concerts that took place in Lake Orion. The co summer concert season is over, but you can still relive it on ONTV. <laughs> and uh, here's a look at Philip Michael Scales, who performed uh, over at Children's Park, I believe. In my heart, certain things don't mean as much to me. Now, ever since I laughed at my plans, I realized that I'm the only one left to please. But I lean on this song like a lover. Now I'm in my 
<laughs> so yeah lots of stuff going on sadly the concert season has come to an end but uh like i said you could relive them here on on tv and every concert that we shot this uh, summer season is on youtube and uh yeah. so you can watch them on demand and just so many great performances throughout the year there were so many yes yeah yeah, yeah. Now, uh, as we said at the beginning of the show, uh, NFL Week 1 kicked off this past weekend. It was a lot of fun. It was. The Lions played on Thursday. Oh. Did you watch that game? Uh, yes, the whole game, even though I was exhausted the next day. But yeah. I just couldn't take my eyes off of it. I had to... Uh, I had to stick it out and see what yeah. happened. So. I felt like I was living in some weird paranormal universe because, <laughs> yeah. or parallel universe, because the Lions played well against the reigning Super Bowl champions. Yes. And I, 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 I'm like, what am I seeing here? <laughs> like, this, it looks like they belong in the it NFL. It does, it does. It was, that's what I said. I said, wow, it was a new feeling, you know, but I like it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. It was, and anybody, I mean, I know there are a lot of people who went to bed at halftime because they were like, oh, same old Lions, right? Yeah. Because at halftime they were behind, um, but yeah. pleasantly surprised in the morning. So that it was. That defense played really well. They, yes. they picked off uh, Mahomes and ran it back for a touchdown, and yeah. they kind of gave Mahomes play. fits all, all night long. And I get a little <laughs> frustrated because the announcers at the end of the game said, well, yeah, the Lions won, but there's an asterisk because the Chiefs are missing players. Well, well, everybody, every team deals with injuries, exactly. and you, you have to adapt and adjust. And mm -hmm. so there, take that asterisk off yeah. that victory. <laughs> they, they beat the reigning Super Bowl champions. And they did. You know what's interesting? I, I had been thinking over the past couple months of ma like making a little bet on the Lions to win it all uh, for the Super Bowl. <laughs> and so I went to one of the online betting sites to see what the odds were and the Lions are actually ranked pretty highly as a favorite to win. Really? And so I didn't even put any money on them because it wouldn't be a, a huge return on my investment but they're like one of the top eight teams in the NFL favored to win the Super Bowl. That's interesting. I mean I've been I've been hearing this from a lot of Lions fans you know those of us yeah. who like wish and hope every year but to hear that, I mean, that's a, that's a bigger thing. This is exciting. This is it, what it could be. <laughs> we as Lions fans have been waiting for for a long, long time. Yes. And could and it finally be here. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the Lions offense has always been able to put points on the board, and usually they have to because they're always playing from behind. Right. But now with a defense that looks pretty solid, yeah. there's reasons to be optimistic. Yes. Now, uh, a week or so ago, we start. We had our ONTV Fantasy Football League return, which I'm really excited about. And we managed to put together 10 teams. You are one of those I teams. Of I am them. one of those yes. teams. Uh, what's your experience with fantasy football prior to joining the ONTV League? Zero. Nada. No nothing. experience. In fact, I don't even follow players. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, as far as knowing who to draft and who to pick, I, I mean, yeah, sometimes it was like, I like his number or he's got <laughs> a very cool name. I mean, you know, I did a few of those picks. I love football. But I do not hold on to that information, you know, stats and players. and You will. Aha, uh -huh, yes. You will. You <laughs> I will think know, I'm going to have to. <laughs> you will know every, maybe not necessarily defense because in fantasy football you just play an entire defense. But right. when it comes to the offensive skill positions, once you get some fantasy football seasons under your belt, you will know every skill position on every team. <laughs> And yeah. yeah, you'll be buying the magazines and stuff. <laughs> what was what was draft day like for you? Oh, draft day was it was a little nerve wracking. I mean, it was fun. I was excited to be here, but it was a little nerve wracking because I had no <laughs> idea. I really I didn't do my homework, and that was my first mistake. I went into it thinking, oh, you know, it shouldn't be too hard to just pick some players, but no, 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 no. I usually do my homework for everything. I do my homework and. Yeah. And, and that is what I will do differently the next time. But yeah, the, the most important thing going into a draft is knowing who's hurt, who's out. Some players have gotten hurt over uh, during the preseason. Yeah. And there's been times where I've drafted in the past where I'll draft somebody and everyone will start laughing and go, he's done for the season. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do that this year. No. But well, the season started off a little wonky, some really – Key players like Kelsey, Mark Andrews, tight end for the Ravens, uh, they did not play in week one. Yeah. And a couple of players got hurt in week one. And on Monday Night Football just last night, Aaron Rodgers appears to be done for the season. Wow. Yeah, so oh, I don't know who I in our league have... drafted him, Somebody if anybody. Somebody did. I, I don't remember who, but uh, yeah. it wasn't me. Yeah, <laughs> so he's, he's, it looks like he's done. And wow. so Hopefully they if, picked a good backup. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if not, that's why you hit the waiver wire. Yeah. So uh, I got my uh, win in week one. I'm really mm -hmm. excited about that. Yep, I did as well, surprisingly. Yeah. I was behind up until the last minute and I checked and <laughs> I won. <laughs> now you said you had the Dallas defense yes. who had a monster game against the Giants. You know what's interesting in, in one of the leagues that I'm in uh, the Dallas special teams blocked a field goal. I don't know if you saw this picked it up and ran it the other direction for a touchdown. <laughs> well the website that I'm in for this other league that I'm in didn't know how to score it because oh. it was such a weird play and a weird touchdown yeah and I had to I sent an email off over to the website saying how are you going to score this yeah and later that evening they ended up giving uh the Dallas defense special teams the points for the touchdown but okay so they they returned the block kick for a touchdown they had a pick six that they returned an interception for a touchdown they shut out the <laughs> Giants so you obviously knew something when you drafted the Dallas team it was luck rolling the dice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that I did look up. I looked up who the top five teams were for defense, and yeah. Dallas was one of them. And I actually have a client moving here from Texas. So Ooh. I don't know. You know, that's sometimes how I pick. I do the same thing for March Madness and basketball, <laughs> basketball too. So, yeah. yep, so I picked I picked Dallas. So Yeah, you know, as a fantasy football is part skill but it's also a whole lot of luck yeah and yeah. uh you sit there and you watch and you just never know what's going to happen and that's what makes football and fantasy football so fun and exciting it so. is it is a lot of fun and and it's going to be interesting to see you know because i had some players i had on the bench that outscored some that i had in the game yeah. so that's going to be uh yeah, you know, fun trying to figure that out as we go along. <laughs> now, you know, what I do to sort of put my mind at ease, if I have someone on the bench that scores points, I tell myself at least someone else didn't have that player scoring points against right. me. So <laughs> I'd rather have those points that on my true. bench Very than true. someone else scoring those points. So, <laughs> all right, true. well, good luck in week two. Thank and you. Good luck to you. So I don't going. think we match up, do we? We're not We're not against each other yet, are we? I don't know. I haven't looked okay. at the schedule for next weekend yet. Um, but we, we'll hit the waiver wire and uh, get ready for week two. <laughs> so, Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, all right, our next segment we have coming up is uh, we're going to get a little tour of some of the improvements that have taken place at Camp Agawam. Uh, as you know, they built, recently built a 
beautiful uh, playscape over there. Mm -hmm. Well, there must have been some demands for restrooms because they put some <laughs> brand new restrooms over there. Uh, they've expanded the beach. I was just there recently for uh, Tommy Stock, yeah. and the beach is beautiful. And so they're making some really nice improvements over at Camp Agawam. So let's take a look uh, at a little tour of the changes that have taken place over at Camp Agawam. Thank you, Patrick, for joining me on this episode of Orient Update and touring us through Camp Agawam. Yeah, Jenny, happy to be here. Well, all right, our first stop here is the beach, and I know it went through extensive work recently. What happened here? It did. So this used to be um, much, a much smaller area, but very, very popular, uh, and we noticed that really only about two to four families could use it at a time comfortably. So we actually ended up doubling it in size and adding this very beautiful retaining wall, um, which also then doubled the swimming area. So now more people in our community can come and enjoy it without feeling like they're packed in together. That's awesome. I know there's a couple families out enjoying it right now, and it is one of my son and I's favorite beaches to come to in the community. So this is a great addition to the park here. Correct, absolutely love it. And we're gonna have, be having one more uh, future, hopefully, addition called the Moby Mat next year, oh, which will allow uh, for easier access for those that may have difficulty walking on yeah. the tough sand, which I know you just did, <laughs> um, as not well as not dress appropriately to be on the beach. Tell. <laughs> Um, as well as uh, wheelchair users are able to oh, roll on awesome. it and roll right into the water and get some enjoyment. That's so, amazing. Yeah. That'll be a wonderful addition. Looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go hit up the next spot and see Should what we jump else we in? find. I mean, I can go up to my knees. Okay. <laughs> at the Fireball, and I know this also had some work done recently. Tell us about the updates here. Correct, yeah, so these beautiful natural rocks which were brought down from the UP um, a handful of years on. ago that we're standing on, very sturdily, very but I sturdy. see you almost just slipped. No, so no, actually, no. <laughs> this year, these beautiful handrails were added by the Friends of Camp Aguam um, okay. to help kind of support you as you're traversing down the mm -hmm. beautiful natural rocks. Um, they also came through and stain these benches for us um, and just kind of really kept it natural here, which is the whole point of this fire bowl. Uh, it feels like an escape away from the busy city life. It is. I love that it is so natural. And if my memory serves me correctly, the daughter of somebody locally famous was recently mm. married here. Ooh, are you talking about the township supervisor, Chris Barnett? I might be. I think you were. <laughs> Yes, he hosted his daughter's wedding yep. out here. I was absolutely stunning. Um, really just showed the natural beauty of what a wedding could be like out here. Um, and we're very thankful. Gorgeous that photos. Gorgeous I photos. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is a great event space. Well, let's let's show them the stage where the wedding actually happened. So let's spin this camera around and go take a spin look at that. Around. <laughs> spin. So this is a stage where the wedding happened, right? Correct. Yeah, and they put up the nice background there as well, too. It's just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful spot, but it's definitely showing its age. So the Friends of Camp Agawam have made it a point that their next project that they're going to help fund out here is going to be kind of adding, maybe doing an addition to the deck, adding it, revamping it, okay. making it a little bit nicer, a little more um, solid, as well as doing some minor electrical work so that their concerts um, can be enjoyed out here, as well as anybody else that wants to have good audio and a great beautiful spot to be married. Now, I heard you say concert. So, this is used more for just what more than just weddings. More so than just concerts, weddings. there's comedy shows, magic shows, there's been all sorts of stuff out here, correct. right? That's absolutely correct. Um, 
People just love it because of its nature and its ambiance and its acoustics. It's, well, it's a little I, bit of everything. And I can hear all of the birds right now, which I absolutely love. And we're um, not too far from the beach and you can't hear them. So it's a nice, yeah, nice it break. Is. So. So many cool resources in this community. I mean, yeah. earlier we talked about uh, Palazzo de Bacci, and then we talked about Wildwood, and now Camp Agawam. There's so much to see and do in this community. There is. There's always a, you know, always an event. I mean, always multiple events. So whatever your interests are, whatever yeah. you are in the mood for, there's something out there. Yeah, so. I've said this before. You cannot be bored here in Lake Warren. No, there's not at all. There's always something to do. Uh, one of the other gems in this community is the library, mm -hmm. and apparently this month is uh, National Get Your Library Card Month. All right. Um, the library, again, has so much to offer. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they just added a, a checkout service thing where you can check out things other than books and media. You can check out tools and wow. uh, other things that you can do. So that library card will get you a lot of benefits and perks uh, to check things out. And, and it's really convenient because if you need to pick up something and you have an odd schedule, not when the library is open, you know, a book or media, you can go to one of the lockers and so you can check it out anytime. That's mm. really nice, that, that feature. So yeah. I, I like that. that. I've had to use that before. So. Yeah, and this past summer, the library's just been bustling with events yeah. and stuff like that. It's so great to see that people and families and kids are still mm -hmm. using the, the library and it's still uh, relevant. Uh, so let's take a look at this short piece about uh, National Get Your Library Card Month. Hi everyone, I'm James Pugh, the Community Relations Specialist here at Orion Township Public Library. It's National Library Card Sign Up Month, and I wanted to talk about all the fun things that you can check out with your Orion Township Public Library card. Uh, not only can you get books, movies, video games, e-books, e-audiobooks, you can get a lot more fun stuff too, like the items from our More Than Books collection. You can get tools, you can get technology like Chromebooks, you can get uh, homework help like a graphing calculator, we have musical instruments like uh, ukulele, and we even have an induction cooktop. We also have uh, these new things called binge boxes where it's movies that are themed and you get five movies at a time and you check them out with your family and you can watch all the movies in that box and then return it. We also have, if you're looking to help with your uh, reading skills, these things called Lit Fit Kits for kids who are uh, in the younger grades and they're trying to practice their reading skills at an early age. And this month special, we have a raffle contest. Sign up for a library card or just show your existing library card and you can get a new one if you want. And you're entered into a $25 raffle for local businesses. I think it's either from G's Pizza or Great Harvest Bread. Uh, so stop into the library for the month of September or anytime for, to get your library card and access to all the awesome things we have to offer. So yeah, what a great resource over there. Yes. Um, just recently we had a representative of the library here in the studio. They're promoting their uh, used book sale. Uh, they do those, how often do they do those? Like, I think it's it a couple a of times a year. Uh, is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so throughout the year you can drop off books and media and I've mm -hmm. dropped off DVDs that I don't watch anymore. And uh, if you've never been to the Friends of the Library used book sale, you're missing out because oh, it's, great. it's a steal. Like yeah. I, I do feel like I'm stealing. I, oh I feel yeah, I know. <laughs> because like, I'll get a stack of books and, and I'm like, so what do I, what do I, oh, quarterly they do it, four times a year? Quarterly. And uh, I'll be like, okay, so how much for this stack of books? And they're like, uh, $5. 
Yeah. Come on. I know. I know. I'm, I like negotiate up. I know. Like, come on. So it's, it's keep a, the change. <laughs> exactly. Make a little donation. Yeah. Uh, but in addition to uh, the the quarterly book sale, they also have an ongoing bookstore, uh, which mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of until just recently. So you don't necessarily yeah. have to wait for the used book sale. You can go in there and see what they got at the bookstore. At the yeah, library. they have it set up like just to the right when you walk in in the lobby area. There, it's great. Yeah. Um, I love it. I've gotten so many different books from those sales, you know, ones that you might want to spend a little more time in and yeah. um, or share with others. So, yeah, yeah. it's great. I collect uh, books about, like, Hollywood and movies and stuff like that. And one time I went in there and I literally walked out with a stack of books <laughs> that uh, are in my collection now. So, yeah, yeah I got to kick out. And you can do that um, because it is a fundraiser for the, the library, the Friends of the Library. But you can... Um, donate money as well. Mm -hmm. You don't have to just spend the dollar, whatever, 50 cents or a dollar they charge per book. You, they do have an area where you can you can donate to. So, yeah. yeah. And is there, there an exhibit going on right now in the lobby of the library? I, I thought they were bringing in an exhibit, like a Smithsonian sort of oh. a thing. So if you get a chance, swing by the library. There's so much to see and do there, and uh, it's just yep. bustling. And sign up, right, it's national sign up to get your library card because, yeah. I mean, not only can you use it in the library physically, but there's lots of resources that the library has online as yeah. well where you can check out books and media and you need your library card to do that. So, yeah. yeah. So get over there. Go get your yep. card and uh, see what's happening over at the library. Now, there's lots of stuff that are going to be going on uh, this weekend. Uh, and Becky has put together uh, Quick Hits. Let's see what uh, Becky has included in Quick Hits. And then when we come back, we'll kind of wind up with some uh, more things uh, coming up in the next few weekends. The Galley Muick GMC Super Cruise will be taking place on Saturday at Lake Orion High School from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The event will include food and drinks, a 50-50 raffle, Rock and Ronnie, and a special guest. On Saturday, the Orion Library will be hosting another 3D print class. This time, design your own bubble wand. Come and create your own one-of-a-kind bubble maker. This class is designed for students in grades 3 through 8. Register at orionlibrary.org. Don't miss Ella Palooza this Saturday at the Wildwood Amphitheater. The event will include live music all day with an amazing lineup of local arts. There will also be food trucks, vendors, a beer tent, kids activities, and more. Proceeds from this event go toward the expansion of accessible recreational spaces in local communities. For more information and tickets, visit ellapalooza.org. The 10th annual Zombie Walk will be taking place Saturday night in downtown Lake Orion. The walk begins at Ed's Broadway Gift and Costume at 8 o'clock. The evening continues with a poker run through the downtown. Donations are appreciated and can go to support the Orient Christmas Parade. New Oakland County Parks will be offering free park entry and honor fall park days this Saturday and Sunday. Visitors can enjoy free daily park entry with access to trails, dog parks, playgrounds, and fishing spots. Now let's take a look at this week's weather. Wednesday's forecast is calling for partly cloudy skies with high 61 and low 45. Mostly sunny on Thursday with high 66 and low 47. Sunny skies on Friday with a high of 72 and low 50. Partly cloudy skies on Saturday with a high of 73 and low 53. And showers on Sunday with a high of 64 and low 51. Well, that's it for this week's ONTV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. So, yeah, this is going to be a busy weekend. Lots it of is. stuff going on. So, yes. we got L.O. Palooza going on uh, pretty much all day the Gowling Super Cruise uh, yep. earlier in the day. And I noticed on the graphic on the screen, it's at Lake Orion High School, which I wasn't right. aware of. Normally it's on the dealership property. And I seem to recall hearing that the proceeds benefit the Veterans Memorial at this particular event. Now, they had an earlier event scheduled in downtown Lake Orion that got canceled due to weather. Mm -hmm. uh, that is their big uh, kids and cops car cruise that where they closed the streets of downtown Lake Orion. Well, that ended up getting rescheduled, and I believe it's the f first weekend in uh, October. Okay. Um, I want to say Sunday, but I'll have to double check. But okay. check Facebook, and uh, but yeah, they're going to reschedule that to early okay. October in downtown Lake Orion. So that's uh, pretty neat to see. That's when they a close great down event. The that's yeah. A, are they just going to be doing the cars? Do you know, or are they going to add another pancake breakfast in? Because I'm always up for that. <laughs> they did go ahead with their pancake yes, breakfast because yes. uh, did rain didn't affect that. But I'm hoping part. they'd bring. Yeah. Back too. Do yeah. another breakfast as well. Yeah. And then, uh, as 
as you saw in the, the one graphic, uh, the zombie walk. Have you yes. ever witnessed the zombie walk? No, we've talked about this before, and I think I actually might be in town to witness it this this year, so we'll see. <laughs> it's something to see. So, it, you know, this all takes place because of Lloyd Coe's birthday. It started out as a birthday celebration, and then they turned it into a fundraiser for the parade, the yeah. nighttime uh, lighted Christmas parade. And every year it seems like it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so uh, all the uh, Walking Dead uh, start off at Ed's Broadway Gifts at Flint and Broadway in downtown Lake Orion. They have a makeup person that applies any zombified makeup that you might need. Uh -huh. And then it's basically a, a pub crawl, a staggered lurch um, <laughs> as, you go, <laughs> as you go from place to place. And uh, it's a poker run. So each place that you go to, you get a playing card and then you you play for I think it's like a 50 50 raffle or something okay that and so fun. it's really something to see I yeah. look forward to it every year uh, it's for a good cause and uh, let's let's get hordes of zombies roaming the streets <laughs> of downtown Lake Orion on Saturday so uh, something else that's coming up and gosh I'm, I think it's this week but it might be next week is the uh, is the uh, fall festival of family fun uh, the Orient Township uh, event at Camp Agawam. Okay. Uh, so check Orient Township Parks and Recreation, either their website, orientparks.com, or on their Facebook page. But that's coming up at Camp Agawam where there's music and food and pumpkin picking and hay rides and things like that. So fun. lots of fun stuff coming up. Yeah. yeah. You got any plans coming lot. up? I am actually playing in a charity golf outing on Sunday, which Ooh. I saw, we saw the forecast there. Not looking promising weather-wise, <laughs> but yeah, it's a fundraiser for the canine rescue in Oxford. Um, so I, I play in that every year with my dad and brother and uh, our childhood friend. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a good time and for a good cause. And so I look forward to it. It's about the one time of year that I golf. <laughs> so. Yeah, I've tried golfing. I, oh. I can't do it. Yeah. I'm not coordinated <laughs> enough. Uh, um, something we probably should mention is yesterday was the anniversary of 9-11 and mm -hmm. uh, the Lake Orion community comes together every year and has a ceremony at the Orion Veterans Memorial which they did last night and uh, they had a keynote speaker who was with President Bush uh, on 9-11 and she shared the stories of uh, being on Air Force One and all the commotion that was going on that day oh. uh, so we had a camera out there to record that we're going to televise that um, but that's something to see but mm -hmm. you know Lake Orion comes together and, and remembers uh, the lives that were lost during these uh, ceremonies we have every year and it's it's hard to believe that it's been over 20 years now I and uh, there are people walking the planet today that don't have any memory of it because they were born they were. after 2001. Yep. All so. three of my kids. Yeah. They were not around. So yeah. yeah and you know it's hard seeing those videos you know as I scroll through TikTok and all that you see people posting a lot of videos and I know their intentions uh, are, you know they mean well but boy it's, it's hard to watch mm -hmm. those uh, especially after all these years but yeah. like they say never forget right so yeah yeah all right any final thoughts before we wrap up um just uh good luck on your uh, fantasy team this you week. too <laughs> yeah yeah I'm looking Look, forward to it so uh got to put in my waivers uh today <laughs> i think the waiver wire is tomorrow and then thursday night football uh want to say eagles vikings i think okay thursday night football and then uh looking forward to week two of the nfl all right i am as well all yes. right <laughs> thanks for watching we'll see you in a couple of weeks on orient today